Welcome to another episode of Summing Up for those which are new to the show. Summing Up is about the latest x Plus Plus update from Alaska Software. Today we are talking about build 807 which was released just a few days ago. So, 807. First of all, we added the new extern command. The new extern command not only supports native types such as 64-bit integer, it also supports callbacks. More on that later. We extended the pbuild command to support debug and release builds, and we did some various fixes related to the Windows Creator update as well as compliant as well as to compliance with the WebSockets IRC 6455. Let's have a look into the Creators update. Some of you may have encountered that on high resolution, high DPI scenarios, XSpace++ 2.0 and of course 1.9 and earlier applications do not start up, so they simply fail to start. A reason for that is simple, Microsoft uh, did some great changes, uh, which lead to the fact that some stock objects in high DPI, uh, high resolution scenario are no more available, they are basically broken which leads to the fact that the XSpace Plus graphic user interface cannot start up. We fixed that, we are avoiding now the usage of stock objects, instead we are creating uh, specific instances with the XSpace Plus Plus internal resource manager, which basically mimics the, what the stock object concept of the Windows platform is. Um, however, this fix we initially didn't plan to port back to 1.9, Unfortunately, it turned out that there are many customers out which have uh, larger installations, uh, larger amounts of installation sites with 1.9 applications in the field, with hundreds or even thousands of uh, end users affected. So we decided to port it back, which of course is a larger effort because we cannot simply just port back the fix. We also need the new resource manager of the uh, user interface runtime part. So it's a lot of work, we will do it, and it will take a couple of weeks until we finish it, but then there will be also a update available for 1.9 SL1, of course only for active subscription customers. Pbuild, debug and release feature. <coughs> well, historically Pbuild has the capability using the object dir define to control where your object files are located. Unfortunately, this feature did not differentiate between release and debug, it was not entered to resource files. So a lot of limitations when projects get larger, it's difficult to manage it. So we decided to, to uh, extend people to support debug and release scenarios in a better way. Let me show you um, how we resolved that task. For that, I'm just creating a new console application, let's call it TST, oops, TST02, that's it, let's build it, let's see how the project looks on the command line, there you see, I build in, there's a subdirectory dot debug, dot debug, if I look into the debug, in this debug directory, the object file and the executables are residing. When I now change in the workbench, project, uh, project settings from debug to release, I'm building again. Let's look into. Now we have a dot debug and a dot release directory. So both the dot release holds the object, the, the release object, the dot debug holds the debug object file, and the executable. <clears throat> so it's totally isolated, objects, intermediate files, anything, and including the targets executable and DLL, are located in the dot debug dot release. Of course, depending if you are uh, um, building a debug or release build, the final target is copied into the target dir, which is by default where the project resides, uh, TST02, so which is exactly here, as you can see, the executor is here. Because the last thing we built was a release build, this is the release executable. 
when we look into the project file, then you can see it's very simple. These are the two nodes which we have added to the project uh, file definition. More about that can be found in the documentation of the Xpace Plus Plus P build utility. The new external command. First of all, with the new external command, we deprecated DLL function, DLL call. So when you're writing new code, use external command. Don't use the old DLL call or DLL function stuff. Even the typical use case when people are using DLL prepare or DLL execute call to speed up the execution of the native API call, this is no more necessary. Extern does all that automatically, so there's no more reason to use DLL prepare or DLL uh, execute call, except you want to hide interfaces in methods of classes, if you like. <clears throat> Uh, the new external command has a type interface. It supports Unicode, it supports callbacks, uh, and it supports 64 bit values. So, overall, we try to resolve all shortcomings of the former DLL function. We also looked into the Visual Fox Pro declare command uh, and added anything which was missing. Uh, which by the way, it's, uh, it's the reason why with the transpiler now, it's possible to transpile all existing declares to the new extern command. So uh, we'll see how this will turn out in the next updates. Let's have a look into that. <clears throat> Here we are. It's assembled. I did the cut and paste from the online documentation, so you can try that out by yourself. See, external long is window visible, input parameter, window handle. And it's a winter uh, or return value long for forget window text, input window handle, uh, text string passed by reference, and the numeric uh, value as long. When we look into the documentation, and we can see uh, we have different calling conventions. As return types, we support shorts, integers, long integers, uh, even 64-bit floats, uh, doubles, and uh, com interfaces, dispatch interfaces. Uh, as input parameter, a couple of more, uh, specifically XPP value and callbacks. We are differentiating between synchronous and asynchronous callbacks. Read the docs about that. It's regarding the resource management. Um, so, and there's a lot of neat stuff behind the scene. For example, when you look here, you get window text. Currently, it executes the ANSI API, which normally you would write this. Don't do that with the new external command. Write it this way for some reason, because if we do this, set char set to Unicode, which will become available in the month to come then it automatically then executes your get window text Unicode version. Or let's assume it's still an ANSI application with what you are writing, but you will do this. Then it's again, because this is the string literal for a Unicode string, C text now holds a Unicode string. And now get window text will execute the Unicode version. So. Don't use A or W as a postfix of the API. We'll use it this way, and the runtime will automatically sort out which version of the Windows 32-bit API is used. <coughs> oh, maybe I should show you the application so you can see it running. Nothing spectacular, but with that callback, I have here Archives, which lists all the windows on my workstation which are used with the Enum Windows API. <coughs> Said that, hope you enjoyed the, uh, this episode of Summing Up and see you next time. <laughs>